Hi, and welcome to Experience Week. We are excited to have you with us today. This presentation is How to Develop a CX Management System by Matt Nelson. Before we jump into content, we have some quick housekeeping items. First, feel free to share the content with your colleagues, as it's not too late to register. Second, let others know you're watching by tweeting at Qualtrics with hashtag Experience Week. And third, all content from today is available on demand, so enjoy. This session is one of a five-part masterclass series presented by Qualtrics CX Consulting. Each session will speak to one of the five core pillars of customer experience management. Each of these pillars or core competencies is critical to successfully deploy a world-class customer experience discipline that delivers optimal customer and financial outcomes. Allow me to share just a little detail into each of these sessions. The first session is titled, How to Develop Culture and Leadership, and will focus on how CX program leaders can gain sponsorship, secure cross-departmental alignment, and build the framework necessary for measurement. This current session will focus on how to develop a CX management system. As such, Matt will focus on how to begin capturing feedback for key relationships and at customer touch points, how to manage with role-based views, followed by how to enable case management and analytics. The third session will focus on how to develop customer intelligence. It centers on how to approach customer research, relational measurement, segment-specific driver analysis, and cross-functional improvement. The fourth, the fourth section will focus on how to develop connected employees. The material will be focused on how to measure and understand the employee experience with the intention of driving action that improves engagement and optimal customer service delivery. The final session will focus on how to develop continuous innovation. The material will be focused on how to foster research innovation and methodology best practices, resulting in innovations to your organization. The time is now yours, Matt. Great. Thanks, Phil. Today I'm going to focus on the second pillar of customer experience management, how to develop a customer experience management system. I want to focus less on the technical details and more on the process and stages of rollout. I want to talk about where to start and how to think about the sequencing of your measurement program. So I'll speak to uh, how to capture feedback at every key touch point and key relationships, how to close the loop, how to manage the role-specific views, and how to begin to integrate uh, basic analytics. But I want to focus less on the specifics of each of those different elements and more on the process and how they all fit together. Great. I'd like to start by providing my perspective on the primary goals of CX Management System. The first is to improve customer retention and loyalty. By helping service customer issues and providing employees the capability to resolve customer complaints, CX programs help organizations resolve negative experiences before they result in lost business. Second, increase customer share wallet and lifetime value. CX management systems can help identify the drivers of customer satisfaction and spend, allowing teams to focus on the activities that incent buying behavior while reducing those that create friction in the sales process. Third, optimize customer acquisition. By helping improve frontline performance and prioritize the strategies that matter, CX programs help optimize customer acquisition both online and in person. Fourth, reduce cost to serve. CX programs enable frontline teams to resolve customer issues efficiently and help incent consistent service levels. In addition, they help identify drivers of satisfaction behavior, allowing teams to focus investment on the areas that generate true ROI. And finally, CX management systems help improve brand awareness and equity. Customers that have a bad experience often tell other people. Enabling teams to retain customers and resolve issues means fewer complaints are shared online and in person. With that in mind, I'd like to give an overview of what a CX management system typically includes, at least from a technology perspective. What are the components and how they all fit together? Uh, a CX management system first enables organizations to understand customer relationships and key touch points and capture unsolicited feedback. And the primary way that this is done is through uh, different channels and different touch points. Right? So think through all the different data collection channels, whether those are online, uh, mobile, all the different points at which your customers are interacting with you are opportunities to engage customers or prospects to understand more about their experience and to capture feedback. Everywhere from your online experience, your digital experience, your mobile experience, to the experience in store and branch if that's applicable to your business, are all opportunities again uh, to capture feedback and understand the experience. 
the second is um, a CX management system enables an organization to identify opportunities, understand trends, and deliver data to the right people. So once you've collected all this feedback, the real value comes by um, providing visibility to those metrics and those insights on role-specific dashboards. So providing regular programmatic visibility to metrics versus target and how the organization is trending in relation to customer satisfaction allow teams to take action and allow teams to, to drive insights and understand what is driving customer behavior. Uh, in addition, in addition to having role-specific views, having text analysis and statistical analysis solutions allow leaders to capture richer insights into what's really driving those metrics, what customers are thinking, what they're feeling, um, and how to think about those um, from an aggregate and a, seg and a segment specific level. And then finally, a six management system enables the organization to take action, both strategic and tactical, to improve customer and business outcomes. And there's a variety of different channels in which organizations can take action, from the very specific um, uh, case management solutions that a vendor might provide to the different communication channels, enabling the moment, uh, uh, or enabling a leader the moment insights are collected to communicate over over Slack um, and over other communication programs um, to really work with the way an organization already operates and take action. So again, the intent, the intention of a case management system is not just to collect feedback, um, but also to be able to easily analyze, identify insights, and then ultimately take action. So as promised, I want to focus the balance of my time on the steps to deliver this type of system. I'm going to stay fairly high level because I want to really optimize in the process. So here are the steps I'm going to speak to. Step number one, build a plan for measurement. Step number two, begin capturing customer feedback. Step number three, manage with role-specific views. Step number four, close the loop with customers. And finally, uh, utilize analytics to drive action. So let's start with that, with that first step, build a plan for measurement. Successful CX programs require planning, executive sponsorship, and cross-functional alignment. Core to this process is a plan for measurement that specifies what will be measured, how it will be measured, and the desired objectives behind this measurement. This process typically involves creating a basic view of the customer journey so that you can begin to prioritize the most important touch points that merit measurement. This then provides context for you to begin thinking about other things, like which metrics you will be measuring and what your benchmark for performance will be. You then want to develop a plan for how you will roll out your measurement and different elements to your program, of your program, bearing in mind that you want to be both pragmatic and provide an opportunity to build momentum. The last step is to establish a governance structure and regular stakeholder reviews to ensure that you have traction and support every step of the way. So let's talk briefly about this first component of building a plan, creating a basic view of the customer journey. The intent is to identify the key customer touch points in your customer experience to determine where measurement should begin. Depending on your business, these touch points may include your website, contact center, frontline sales members, etc. While there are many journeys a customer may take, identifying the primary touch points in a generic journey provides a basis for measurement planning. Uh, now, I realize many organizations spend a lot of money, time, and energy building very detailed customer journeys by customer segment, location, and other dimensions. This is not the intention here. Rather, the intent is to simply identify touch points in your experience and provide a basis for which touch points may merit prioritized focus. In many cases, this is a fairly illuminating exercise. So it's recognized that not every moment of your customer journey is equally important to customer satisfaction and purchase behavior. Varying expectations mean customers may care less about interactions with your call center, but will consider your competition if your mobile app experience isn't excellent. Bottom line, you want to determine which key experience points are most likely to accelerate or prevent purchase behavior and start there. You may want to also factor in which parts of your experience, if measured and optimized, will generate the most meaningful and identifiable business value, helping you prove value early in your program rollout. So once you have identified what you want to measure, the next step is to determine how you will measure and what the benchmark for success will be for each touch point. Being able to compare to industry standard scores or even internal benchmark can provide the bar you plan to measure against. Satisfaction and loyalty metrics such as NPS, customer effort score, and CSAT can be augmented with open-ended questions about preferences and improvement opportunities. And I won't go into those metrics here. There's a lot of information available online into which, what sort of metrics, especially customer loyalty and satisfaction metrics, to consider. 
Bottom line, you want to be aligned on what good will look like so that there is little argument that you've helped drive improvement. You want to include both customer and business metrics since both are very important to your program goals. The next step is to create a staged roll-up plan that helps internal stakeholders understand where you plan to begin and the expected milestones for each phase of your measurement. Phase one of your measurement should focus on only one or two touch points, allow you to prove the concept early, make adjustments, and build momentum. Now, just to illustrate the concept, I've included a retail banking example here. Again, very high level, um, but the first step may be to have a pilot where you focus on simply collecting post-transaction feedback at a select group of branches. Again, this is a retail banking example. Obviously, it's important to include key milestone dates so everyone is aligned on the cadence and can track progress. So again, if the first step is to have a pilot where you measure post-experience measurement across the select branches, the second phase may allow you to then roll out that same sort of measurement to uh, more branches and add relational measurement so that you're not just capturing feedback on, on that specific branch experience, but also beginning to capture relational measurement and understanding for key customers. And again, I've started with post-experience measurement because that's a very basic part of the experience that, uh, from my experience, would be very valuable to both measure and optimize from a banking perspective. And then in later phases, you have opportunity to add in additional use cases like role-based management views, um, add in additional touch points like contact center measurement, uh, and begin to add in more sophistication to your program, such as uh, closed-loop follow-up or case management. Uh, I tend to see text and statistical analysis being added later in programs, which is helpful because that uh, is able to build off of what, what uh, oftentimes comes before. And again, as I mentioned before, critical to this plan is including the delivery dates and key milestones that you want to hit. So you have a plan that you can track against uh, and help drive progress towards. Actually, your program needs a govern governance structure. The governance team should include major stakeholders and sponsors and focus on ensuring your measurement program is meeting core object objectives, progressing as per your established timeline, and provide a form for overcoming roadblocks. You may want to consider a separate cadence for sponsor reviews and working team reviews. With sponsors, the intent will be to resolve roadblocks, communicate ROI, and, ins and ensure the vision matches those who are actually funding the program. Uh, the working team reviews, uh, uh, in contrast, can focus on tactical elements specific to the rollout plan. At every step of the journey, you need to ensure measurement is seen as court business performance and not just an exercise in measurement in and of itself. So let's talk about the second the second step to developing or delivering a CX management system, and that is to begin capturing customer feedback. So, so if you have a basic plan for measurement, you can begin to capture basic customer feedback. Now, your program won't be fully baked, but it's important to get started so you can test and iterate what, what to ask, how to distribute surveys, who you want to target, and how you look at the data. It is better to make errors early and quickly and incorporate feedback before your program develops greater complexity. Now, initial feedback collection typically falls into two different categories. The first is transactional measurement, and the second is relational measurement, and I'll speak to both of those. So let's talk about transactional measurement. As the name suggests, this type of measurement captures feedback relevant to specific transactions or experiences. Transactional measurement helps to reveal how well specific experiences met the expectations of the customer and where there might be opportunities for improvement. Now, the way I think about it, there are four different categories of experiences or touch points that you should consider measuring. And of course, these vary greatly based on your business, your industry. For each of these, I want to briefly comment on what you might want to measure. So the first experience or touch point that's worth thinking about is the web or the mobile experience, right? Whether people are engaging on your mobile device or on an app um, or on your website. And the intent here is to identify barriers to conversion and satisfaction. A simple survey might ask what customers came to accomplish, whether they were able to accomplish that task, or how the organization can improve the experience. And of course, these are distributed in ways that are embedded directly into the site, so that's a seamless part of the brand experience. The second touch point of experience worth considering uh, is the sales or location-specific experiences. Right? And the intent here is to identify sources of friction and unmet expectations by asking whether customers were able to accomplish what they came to accomplish, how they rated the experience, and how the experience could be improved. Now, if applicable, questions may also capture feedback on satisfaction with company representatives so there was some sort of human interaction as part of that location-specific experience or sales experience. Now, many organizations provide services. Um, and in that regard, the intent with transactional measurement for services is to capture feedback on the services your organization provides to understand how individuals are per 
how service individuals are performing the ICE for customers. So questions may focus on customer satisfaction with the service itself, uh, with the, the service professional, the company professional, and opportunities for improvement so that you can coach um, individual employees with real data. And finally, the, the, the fourth experience or touch point that may be worth considering is the contact center experience for organizations that have contact centers. And the intent here is to manage performance with the customer in mind by capturing feedback after the contact center interaction. So measurement might include a very simple IVR survey or other type of survey that in a very one or two or three questions asks about their satisfaction with the experience, the agent, and what sort of opportunities for improvement might exist. So now that we've talked about transactional measurement, I'd like to spend a few seconds talking about relational measurement. Now this type of measurement extends beyond touch points and illuminates the overall relationship your customers have with you, their overall satisfaction, and the likelihood of them continuing to do business with your brand. There's actually a lot of ways to conduct relational measurement. In a sense, it can allow you to understand what they think of each part of your experience and how to improve. Most brands deploy relational surveys to a random sample of customers at regular intervals or after significant interactions. And again, there's a lot of ways to, a lot of ways to conduct relational measurement. These are just some principles to consider. Now, when we're talking about um, distributing either transactional or relational surveys, we want to consider the measurement channel in which you're distributing that, those surveys. Whether you're capturing feedback at key touch points or for key relationships, determining the measurement channel is key. In general, it is best to solicit feedback in ways that make it easy for the customer to respond and can be timed with the actual experience. For example, experiences on your website are best measured through real-time website surveys delivered immediately after the customer experience is complete. In general, I like to think about six primary channels. Uh, the first is email, right, which is a traditional channel. Um, it's very easy to distribute surveys um, through email. The second is on online, which involves uh, soliciting feedback direct directly on your website or your mobile site. The third is an app. Many experiences occur directly on your app experience. Um, so that channel, that, that channel relates to soliciting feedback directly within that app. The fourth is SMS, um, which is a very important channel given how commonly millennials and other demographics traditionally engage with you and your brand and are willing to respond to feedback. Um, and it's very common to be able to engage customers via SMS text message, two-way text message. Uh, fourth is IVR, so specific to like a contact center interaction. Uh, IVR corresponds to the ability to capture feedback after phone calls. And finally, social. Many organizations are very willing to provide feedback over social channels, and so it's important to be able to capture feedback uh, from both your social properties and from social media channels in general. So again, if you're trying to capture feedback after a human interaction at a location, it is probably optimal to engage them over SMS so they can see and respond to your questions quickly. If they just completed a transaction online, it might make more sense to trigger a survey online while they are still in the mode of thinking about that purchase and so forth, just to provide some examples. So let's talk through that third step of delivering a CX management system, and that is to manage with role-specific views. So let me just step back very quickly as I kind of open up this, this phase. The ultimate goal of customer feedback collection is to empower frontline and management teams to improve the performance and decision making. Providing real-time role-specific dashboards that visualize performance against targets is critical to customer experience management and, by extension, company performance. Role-based views vary based on role level and function. Executives need views that provide high-level performance by region in comparison to target and trends so they can manage improvement at an executive level. Managers, in contrast, need to see performance for individuals on their teams so they can coach and drive improvement. Individual contributors benefit from a view of their performance versus target. So let me walk through very briefly how role-specific views can benefit and drive performance for individual teams. So the first team that benefit from uh, role-specific management are locations and sales-based teams. The intention of role-based views for locations and sales teams is to drive purchase behavior and satisfaction. So to kind of paint the picture, with role-based views, executives can view overall customer and sales metrics versus target and trend for each region. Managers can view uh, results specific to their location and team and coach with easy comparisons of top versus bottom performers. Individual contributors can track individual performance versus target and understand drivers of customer scores. Um, another team that can benefit are services teams, who can use role-based views to coach individuals and drive improvement with real-time feedback from the customers they serve. So for executives of services teams, 
the uh, executives can view overall customer and volume metrics versus target for each group and receive automated alerts based on results that fall above and below threshold. Managers can view results specific to their location and team and coach with easy comparisons of top versus bottom performers as before. Individual contributors can understand how they rate in relation to customer and sales targets and the drivers behind their scores. Um, we've spoken and I spoke before about the contact center, and clearly contact center leaders and, uh, and agents can use role-based views to accomplish a variety of objectives. Leaders of call centers can track satisfaction, productivity, and efficiency metrics, metrics versus target and trend, and receive immediate alerts for results that are tracking above or below threshold. Managers can track individual agent level metrics, dig into drivers of individual scores, and coach with actionable data. Individual agents can understand how they track versus target and understand the underlying customer explanations behind their scores. Now, we spoke about the mobile measurement. Digital teams also benefit by having role-based views. Uh, digital teams can track conversion rates and satisfaction scores for each site and page side-by-side -side to other core analytics variables. Customer feedback can help illuminate the drivers behind these scores with customer rankings for clarity, usefulness, and ease of use per page. Teams can also dig into individual verbatim to understand additional detail. And finally, um, role-based views can help, can help uh, uh, account managers drive uh, retention and spend with key accounts. Leaders of account management teams can track key account satisfaction metrics and spending behavior to understand financial performance and identify at-risk accounts before defection occurs. Key account owners can immediately identify and track individual account scores and understand that individual drivers behind their scores take action before accounts are at risk. So again, think of the relational measurement you conduct Creating role-based views allow those teams to not only see results, but be able to track results and incorporate those sort of findings into how they manage accounts and how they think about account management in general. So the fourth, fourth phase or steps to uh, delivering a CX management system is being closed in the loop with customers at scale. So just to provide some context, use customer feedback to drive team improvement and take strategic action is necessary, but not sufficient for full customer experience management. Customers expect that the feedback they provide will be answered and that the organization will react to their feedback. In many ways, closed loop follow-up and issue resolution is the core vehicle by which experience management systems help drive retention and improve shared wallet. First, frontline teams need the scalable tools to be able to easily follow up with customers following negative feedback. It should be very easy to view open tickets, take action, and ensure resolution. From a management perspective, it's critical to provide a visibility to how frontline teams are performing. Being able to track productivity, resolution rates, help managers jump in when needed, and so forth. Automatic alerts uh, based on thresholds and escalations can allow leaders to not always have to constantly look at dashboards, but simply rely on the system to tell them when things are broken. Again, the technology should make it easy to respond and track progress for all levels of the organization involved in closing the loop. The last step in establishing a robust customer experience management system involves utilizing analytics to identify deeper insights that lead to additional strategic and tactical action. Critical findings are often buried in the realms of, or deep in the details of text feedback, but they're only accessible by combining operational behavioral data. The ultimate ambition of analytics is to more effectively respond to customer feedback and predict the needs of future customers. Again, this is a very basic high-level discussion, and I'll focus on just a few core analytics that you might want to consider. So the first type of analytics I want to talk about are satisfaction and purchase drivers. Understanding the underlying drivers behind customer satisfaction and purchase behavior is key to driving improvement with real precision. Key driver analysis identifies both the most important factors behind a variable, like satisfaction, and how a given organization performs in relation to those factors. The intention is to look for drivers that are both highly important to your customers and yet poorly rated. Let's look at this matrix as an example. In this matrix that I'm sharing here, this key driver matrix, staff expertise is very important to your customers, and yet your customers are very unhappy with your performance there. This is a clear area of focus for improvement. Drivers that are in the top right quadrant are very important, but you're already performing very well along that dimension, so that's not an area of focus. Um, areas that are uh, drivers of, of, of satisfaction, according to this matrix, that are um, in the bottom two quadrants are not important to customers. So whether you're performing well in relation to either of these categories is probably less important. So again, the purpose of having 
a key driver's analysis like this is to identify where to focus your activities and also where not to focus your activities. As I alluded to text analysis earlier. There are two different types of text analysis that merit focus, at least an in initial perspective, for a CX management system. The first is topic analysis. So verbatim feedback can provide insight into what customers really think. Text analysis tools like topic analysis help group these verbatim um, elements into common topics, helping explain what is driving satisfaction and behavior metrics by customer profile. The second is sentiment analysis. So verbatim also provides an opportunity to understand how customers felt as they provided that feedback. Text analysis tools can help identify the sentiment innate to each comment, helping inform prioritization and adding an additional level of understanding. So taking a step back, both topic and sentiment analysis help you extract additional meaning and understanding behind your text so that when you're considering strategic improvements or strategic changes or even coaching specific reps, that data is really unlocked to help really understand what is driving those satisfaction scores, what is driving that purchase behavior. Customers are telling you and both topic and sentiment analysis help you understand exactly what they're telling you from a very aggregate perspective. And so I want to talk about two different types of statistical analysis. The first is statistical significance testing. Uh, the leaders, uh, leaders run the risk of assuming conclusions are representative without conducting significance testing. Significance testing validates conclusions and provides the confidence that you will need to prioritize conclusions and take appropriate action. Because in many cases, even though the data may be saying something is true, you might not have the representative data sample to be able to say that with real authority. Second is customer churn regression analysis. Explaining and observed customer behavior is critical to predicting future behavior and acting accordingly. Customer churn analysis can help identify the true drivers of churn and overall satisfaction. Advanced tools enable users to explain any variable from customer churn to upsell and cross behavior. So by being able to identify what's really driving churn, you can take action with a degree of confidence that the actions you're taking are going to actually um, resolve the underlying issues behind that behavior. So bottom line, the ultimate intent of analytics is to help you identify and validate the conclusions you reach through your data so you can be precise in those actions, investments, and improvements that you prescribe. Without analytics, you risk capturing feedback that is true. Uh, without analytics, you risk capturing feedback without truly understanding the insights that are buried deep within your data. More specifically, analytics help identify the drivers to customer churn, arming you with the understanding of how to influence customer behavior. So just to, to wrap up, we've talked about five steps to developing and delivering a CX management system. They were to first build a plan for measure, measurement, second to begin capturing customer feedback, third to manage with role-specific views, fourth to close the loop with customers, and finally to begin utilizing analytics to drive action. I focus primarily on the stages for rolling out this program, less on some of the specifics and technical elements of the program, because most important is having a clear plan and being able to be very deliberate in how you roll out your program. Recognizing that as you begin capturing feedback and as you begin rolling things out, things are going to change, your program is going to evolve. But if you have a structure in place and a plan in place, you have a strong foundation upon which to pivot, upon which to innovate, um, and can begin to capture um, alignment and support from across the business early in that process. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we really appreciate that. And thanks to all of you for joining today, and make sure to tune in for the rest of Experience Week for more great content.